Hour. For those of you getting the broadcast on full circuit to TV or watching by way of the web, uh, the, the shadow of that very Freedom Tower right there. Uh, we are uh, coming to you today, and as you can tell in, in that shot, it is a gorgeous day in New York. It's going to be about 82 this afternoon and just couldn't be uh, any nicer. Uh, a really, really good, good day. Uh, I wish it was a good day in our country. I wish that uh, the the condition of our country was as in good a shape as the weather forecast that uh, <laughs> that I'm reveling in. Um, I have a philosoph- this will be a philosophical uh, uh, issue today. Oh, and by the way, management wanted me to make sure that I said this because uh, the last time I was with you, uh, I said that I had come to a new conclusion. And it was one that I was slow to come to. It took me nearly uh, six years, uh, seven years maybe, to uh, get to this point. Uh, I, I've written a best-selling uh, biography. Well, not biography, but a, a book about our president. Um, came out in 2010. It was number one on Amazon for a number of weeks. And it, it, I, there's, I, I go way, way back with this president, further back than I've ever been with any other highly elected uh, office holder in terms of understanding him, in terms of knowing his his uh, patterns of thinking and behavior and everything else. And, and I, above all people, wanted to be fair, wanted to give him the uh, biggest benefit of the doubt I've ever given anybody the benefit of the doubt of. And I just can't give him any more benefit of the doubt ever on anything about anything ever. Because I feel like he's committed treason against his country. Now, I need to be, due to management's request, very uh, sincere about this. This is only the opinion of Kevin McCullough. It does not represent anybody other than Kevin McCullough. So please don't associate what I'm about to say or talk about with anybody else, because it's, it's nobody else's opinion. It's just mine. And I don't speak for anyone else, and I'm not an empowered spokesperson for any organization or anything. It's just, it's just KMC. But there have been things about this president, few in number, but a couple of things that I've liked. And there have been a number of things that have concerned me. There have been a number of things that have been bothersome. There have been some things that have uh, been uh, outright offensive. But it wasn't until the Bergdahl exchange and the Benghazi episode that I really felt that the president was treacherous. And that has changed, uh, that has shadowed everything else that I've ever thought, that I've ever commentated on, spoken about, written about. Uh, in the uh, in the public space about the president, uh, because I do I do I think I think he's full of treachery, and I think that it um, I think that it's time that if we win the Senate in November, that we invoke impeachment proceedings. Um, when you compare the um, behavior of William Jefferson Clinton and what we impeached him for, to the level. Of the degree of the betrayal of the man in high office in the White House right now, you you look at two completely different people. Oddly enough, and, and I believed that when President Clinton lied under oath to Kenneth Starr, I believe that was an impeachable offense because I don't think you get to commit felonies, i.e. perjury, on the stand to a federally empowered investigator and an agent of the court, I don't think you get to commit felonies to those people and not get impeached. But at the very worst case scenario, what that president had done was commit perjury to a fellow of the court and uh, an empowered uh, investigator empowered by the, uh, by the uh, special prosecutor. That's the worst That's the worst, friend. What this president has done, and this is how philosophical it's going to be today. You have to pick one of two stories from this point in the Bergdahl scenario going forward, okay? There's one of two things that happened here. Because yesterday we found out uh, in in a a variety of uh, news that came flooding through as I had the day off, uh, uh, we we found out some very um, intriguing things. And the president himself, or the White House, which are serve as his agents and speak as his proxies, they said 
that the reason that United States law could not be followed when it came to the Bergdahl incident, okay, you're with me. So he's making an excuse for breaking the law. The reason that someone gives when you break the law can have something to do with it. Let me give you an example. Um, you're pregnant. Your wife has had a, a uh, difficult pregnancy, and she calls you, and it's a couple of weeks early before the due date, and she says, I think my water just broke, uh, and, you, and you get home as fast as you can, and you put her in the car, and you drive to the hospital as fast as you can because you're concerned about the life of the child. Now, if a police officer pulls you over, he will likely say this is an emergency. He'll get in front of you. He'll turn his lights on, and he will, he will allow you to break the law in his presence and take you to the hospital. And... and likely will not write you a ticket. Could, could he write you a ticket? Technically, yes, but I don't know of any police officer that, that would. They would understand that extenuating circumstances were valid in order to break that law. Okay. So the decision that the president has to make when he comes to the United States Senate and is explaining all of this the last couple of days, he, he feels like he has to give a reason as to why he's broken the law. Note He's admitting up front that he did break the law. Note, he is admitting, I knew this was the law. <laughs> I tried to say I didn't, I, I did inform everybody, which that wasn't true. And then I tried to say that I didn't have to inform everybody. And that wasn't true. The law says I'm supposed to tell Congress what I did. So he is admitting, he's, he's just giving up the ground. Okay, I broke the law, but here's why. The Taliban said that if I made any news of this swap public prior to it occurring, that they would kill Mr. Bergdahl. Okay. That's what he said. That's the reason. That's the rationale. That's the official reason. It's what he's saying. So I have to ask myself a question today. I have to... I have to as I want to obliterate confusion and amplify truth and pursue clarity, I, I really need to think clearly about what I'm being told as his employer. Remember, the president works for me. Um, and I need to make sure that I understand his, his, what he's actually saying. And then I need to decide the merit of it. So what I've come to the realization of is that the president, in saying what he said, is doing one of two things. And here's the school of thought that's out there on this. Um, first school of thought. Obama got black, blackmailed by the Taliban to keep quiet or they'd kill him. And that's why he didn't tell Congress. Uh, point number two. The Taliban never blackmailed him and he's making this up out of thin air thinking that it will give him cover and help him hide the fact that he didn't tell Congress. Or, or it'll be the, my, my wife's in, in labor and I'm struggling to get to the hospital as fast as I can. He's trying to make us think that that's what's going on, that, that, that this was such the emergency that that, okay, so given that that's the two school of thoughts, here's what I want you to answer for me today. Because this, this, is very, this is a great opportunity for us to refine how we think, okay? We're, we're going to actually engage in some binge thinking today. We're going we're gonna to take the gray matter. We're going we're gonna to shave it down and get really, really lean today. But here's what I want to know. I'm taking a survey, a, a poll on the, uh, on the Facebook page, and here's what I'm asking. Which is the worst move? Uh, being blackmailed by the Taliban that the Taliban has that reach into the president so that the president is, I don't know, forced to go along with what they're saying. That's option number one. Or option number two, the idea that you can just knee-jerk fib about it and get away with it. F from a moral perspective, which one is more cumbersome in terms of the danger associated with it. 
a president that knee-jerk lies to his nation, or a president that views his nation as so weak that he can be blackmailed into giving up the five most dangerous terrorists in the world in exchange for <laughs> a terrorist. Oh, you didn't hear? Yes, uh, Mr. Bergdahl, we now know from a ton of research that has just been released about his stay. Uh, we had surveillance and intelligence uh, people bringing together reports. Um, he declared jihad on the United States well into his stay. Uh, he declared himself a mujahideen. He tried to walk away from his post two other times prior to being able to. And uh, he basically uh, had an AK-47 and a gun, and he was allowed to walk around and be one of the guys. One of the guys, he said, salam, salam, peace, peace. I think it's kind of like, hey, but uh, it's, it's salam, salam. So we gave up the five, the five worst terrorists in the world for maybe the world's dumbest one, but that, that, was, the, that was the deal that the president felt blackmailed by. And, and I'm not going to come back from that word. When, when you hold something over somebody's head and say, you do this or else, that's blackmail. You're, you're being manipulated by an external source. Do you know why adultery is still outlawed in the United States military? You know why it's a, a criminal charge in the military, even though it's not in, in civilian life? Because they don't want officers being able to be blackmailed. They don't, they don't want people being able to uh, f cause outside forces to, to, uh, to put extraneous manipulation onto an agent of the United States military. <laughs> well, what do we have to worry about? Our commander-in-chief got blackmailed. Or did he? W which is more morally problematic for you? That he, he viewed his situation as being so weak that he could not tell, according to the law, the body of, of people that he's required to before he let five of the world's worst terrorists onto the street? Or that he just made it up and thought, this will just appease him for a while, and that'll take care of that? Which do you believe it is? And if you, if you do believe it is a certain thing or another, do you think that's more problematic for America, for the nation, for us as a people, for our children, for the future, or do you think the other one is? Because I was, I was on the train headed to the studio this morning, and I started making lists of, of what each one of those two things mean, and there's a tremendous philosophical world of difference between the two. If, if a president who's a commander-in-chief and uh, you know, he delegates the, the all decisions. I mean, he, he executes all the decisions of the United States military. He, he orders the commands and the hits and everything else. If he's able to be blackmailed, if he's able to be controlled and forced to listen to the very terrorists that we're fighting, you, you see where that's going. And if he just knee-jerk lies to us, that's a whole different set of problems because each of them reveal a worldview that has a lot of consequences to what that worldview looks like. So I just want to know from you, which do you think it is? He got blackmailed or he just made it flat up? It's one of the two, and I want to know what you think. 888-589-8840-888-589-8840. I'm Kevin McCullough. This is AFA Today on AFR Talk. Stay with us. An American Family Minute. I'm Ron Cook, Director of Localization for AFR. In the old days, if you wanted to let the people in your town know something, the town crier would ride through town yard.